Hi, I'm Phil Smith, partner of Cutronelli Investment Services, and I'm joined by Mike Cooney, Senior Investment Advisor from our Sydney office, to talk about what's been happening on financial markets over the past week. Mike, what's been happening? Hey, good morning, Phil. Yes, the, uh, the NASDAQ made weekly gains of uh, 4.3%, with the big tech names announcing last Thursday, all reporting very well. The S&P 500 earnings season is now 70, 70% complete, as the depressed expectations have offered more surprises to the upside with the index rising 4.3% from last Tuesday's close. Australia's ASX 200 had its worst one-day decline on Friday since April, dropping more than 2%, as Victoria's spike in COVID-19 cases registering more than 700 cases per day. A rebound of the Australian shares on Tuesday, led by the strength in US and other overseas markets, has seen that index pretty much unchanged for the week. Yeah, thanks, Mike. We've mentioned the crazy valuations of some of the tech companies over the past few weeks and again note the incredible run Tesla has had of late. Tesla's market capitalization is over 300 billion and is now bigger than the value of Bank of America and American Express combined. This makes Elon Musk's personal shareholding of Tesla worth nearly as much as the combined market capitalization of General Motors and Ford. Not bad for a company that delivered 90,000 cars in the second quarter of the year. To put that into perspective, Ford delivered almost two and a half million cars in 2019. The stock price is implying Tesla either becomes the largest producer of cars in the world, or they significantly, significantly increase margins. But Musk has uh, highlighted the fundamental scaling constraint to Tesla's business model is battery cell production. The graph shows either battery cell production is being underestimated or projections of Tesla are far too optimistic. Time will tell. What else is happening on the markets, uh, Mike, that's of interest? Speaking of crazy, uh, the investor insanity has offered up another example of just how frothy the market currently is. Eastman Kodak, the photography company that was one of the first casualties of the shift to the digital world, has been hanging on by a thread for decades. It, it went bankrupt in 2012 and emerged from Chapter 11 just a year later. Now, news last week that the US government would loan it $765 million to help reduce drugs as part of a new pharmaceutical unit to help with the COVID-19. Uh, this sent the stock price soaring from $2.15 all the way up to an intraday high on last Wednesday of $60 US dollars before closing overnight at $14.40. Now this is reminiscent of the speculative surge in bankrupt companies earlier this year, such as Hertz. Robin Track, a firm that follows the patterns of traders using the popular app Robinhood, or hooders as they like to call themselves, uh, Kodak is now the most actively traded stock on that platform for the past week. The only other stocks with bigger following over the past month on Robinhood are Elon Musk's car company, Tesla, mega cap stocks, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and biotech, Moderna. Now, Kodak has experienced producing chemicals from the film business, but there's no guarantee that the company can easily morph into the next Pfizer or Merck. Popularity of these stocks with poor fundamentals like Kodak, Kodak sorry, uh, are another example that the stock market has jumped the shark. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, there's two th there's two main factors at play at the moment. The Robinhood speculative online tra share trading, driving stock prices to crazy levels, and the US Federal Reserve continuing to bail out companies that may not be worthy of being bailed out. Tom will tell how that, uh, that plays out. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. We'll catch you again next week. Thank you.